know, but this is oh, my mic. Oh, yes, <laughs> right. Hi. Hi, everyone. Okay, it was well adjusted. So my name is Katrin Schechtman, and I'm reading it over the slide. And I'm from Toronto, Canada. And I'm Dave, and I'm from Gatineau, Quebec. <laughs> we do work in the same company, which name is Bold Radius, and it's a consultant's company, and we do Scala and TypeSafe uh, technologies. Um, since we have clients in Scala, uh, we also sometimes elaborate about the front end that they need, and we have one client that does Scala GS, and we have one internal project that uses Scala GS. So we feel ourselves comfortable with giving this talk, maybe. No. <laughs> I know why it happened. I didn't start the watch. So, yes. Okay. So our talk is how to convince your manager to adopt Scala JS. And so manager can be anybody. It could be your boss or your wife or your boyfriend or your dog or that closure script guy that you know who you are. Every company has one. And they're right. Closure script is pretty awesome. Um, so uh, we believe that uh, you can write uh, rich clients and do effective front-end development with the Scala.js ecosystem. And uh, we believe it's viable and it's preferable. And it's a, a very strong claim to make because JavaScript's very incumbent and um, it, it, people do it very well. Um, so we're going to present some tools to enable you to convince whoever you need to uh, to be able to do this. OK, so let's start with uh, who are you and who are we. And we believe that you know Scala. We also believe that you love Scala. And the idea is that uh, you can do only Scala because you sometimes have to do front end. Um, I don't know how many of you know Scala.js. Would you mind to raise your hands who already done Scala.js? Okay, and who haven't? Oh, okay, good. Um, so we can't go to drinks as of now. We are going to proceed with our talk but there, because there are people who doesn't know Scala.js. Um, if you do know Scala.js, yes, um, we have some opinions. If you don't, we get you going, because we are, ho we are going to have two demos today, two repos. So who are we? We are hardcore server-side Scala and Akka, Scala and Akka developers. We are relatively new to Scala.js, uh, but we've done some JavaScript. So we've done some Backbone and some um, AngularJS and some Ramda.js and some it's going on and going on, so we suffered. OK, um, so I'm going to describe to you uh, how we came to Scala.js. And uh, how many of you here had the uh, pleasure to see Julie Pitt's talk early today? OK, it was an amazing talk. And um, uh, before I continue with this, I'd just like to say that uh, it was very encouraging for us to see that talk, because we came to very similar conclusions from different paths. And um, that's encouraging. Um, the way I came to Scala uh, to Scala JS was actually through Scala tags, and um, that I came to Scala tags through the Play framework, and um, the Play framework has a templating engine, and uh, I guess the play way of saying this would be that it provides an opportunity to not use it. Um, I, I didn't like it. Uh, you're writing HTML. You're not really writing Scala. The tooling for it isn't there unless you pay for it, and um, so I remember doing a play framework project and uh, having to write a template. And uh, I said, there's got to be a better way. And I literally typed Scala and HTML into a, and bang. And my life changed, and I've never looked back. And one man has changed the world. No, not quite, but uh, so that man is, uh, is Howie Lee, or Lee Howie. Um, Scala Tags is a, uh, a DSL for writing HTML. And uh, it's a sane way to write HTML. Uh, you can uh, compose, you can write functions. Um, you're not writing XML. And uh, so, you know, I just kept going back to this guy's GitHub all the time. And uh, I remember when Scala RX came out, it was uh, a year and a half ago. And uh, my company wants us to give talks at meetups. And I needed something to talk about. And um, today, Julie presented a, a wonderful way of. Uh, writing to the DOM and, and do data, doing data binding with ScalarX. And um, I put a very similar demo, not as nice as hers, but you know, a little hello world to do thing together. And I presented it. 
at a meetup in Toronto, and um, this meetup was full of like uh, backend Aka guys who were bored. They didn't want to see this stuff at all. Like, ugh, okay. And uh, I finished the talk, and from the back, this hand came up, this force of nature, and said, uh, why would I ever learn Scala if I'm an Angular dev? Why in the world would I ever learn Scala to write JavaScript? And uh, I didn't have an answer. I said, well, disclaimer, I haven't started working for Bold Radius yet, so I had my own opinions. Yes, and they were good opinions. And uh, well, that got us thinking, why? Why would you? You've got, uh, you've got your stuff set up. You can write effective front-end code in JavaScript. You've suffered with it, so you've, you, know, uh, you know it's warts. Um, why would you? Um, and here we are a year later, and anyways, so this is how we've come to this. Yeah. So just learn some JavaScript, it ain't that hard. So we work at a company with a lot of differing opinions, and that's the prevalent opinion at our company. Yeah, and, uh, it's a real man with a real it's opinion. Good, it's a good question. Um, yeah. His opinion actually is much more direct and strict, but we kind of ask him not to express it as he usually expresses it. Yeah. So it's a stripped version for the talk. It's a polite version, yeah. yeah. So uh, JavaScript guys, they're living their dream, right? And they die and live by their setup. And don't get me wrong, for those who do not, uh, didn't experience uh, Scala.js yet, you're gonna need setup. Scala.js is not magic, but it, it's gonna make your life easier, and we would like to show you how. Okay, um, there was also another wonderful presentation today by James Earl Douglas about JavaScript and comparing JavaScript and, and Scala. And uh, he went over a lot of these things. Um, so Howie has also put together a wonderful little GitHub book called Hands-On Scala.js, and uh, I'm, I'm pulling from that. Um, JavaScript's it's an okay language. It's not that bad. You can do a lot of stuff in it. It has some warts, and everybody's available, uh, aware of them. There's an industry around uh, coding around these warts, and a uh, uh, billion blog posts on what this means in Scala and double equals and scope, etc. But uh, as we, I think we both found out, with JavaScript code in production, it's, it's difficult to refactor JavaScript at a certain scale. And, um, and actually, two days ago, that came up, and I thought it was apt. I, mean, I still don't know what it is. I don't, if I had to describe to you what prototype-based inheritance was, uh, I'd have to look at it up again. Like, and classes coming in ES6, and who's tracking that, and do you have time to track that? And um, so if you're coming to front-end development and you don't know JavaScript, you're going to have to know this stuff um, eventually. Or, we'll get to that. So. Who is Horse.js? Who uh, is it? Uh, it's um, it's a, a, a Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Does he have many followers? Yeah, yeah. How many? I don't know. A okay. lot. Enough. <laughs> um, okay, but JavaScript as a platform, it's... You don't have to install anything. Browsers are everywhere. Everybody's got a browser. JavaScript's pretty well enabled in everybody's browser. Um, and it's sandbox security. When I close my browser, nothing's been written to my box. Yay. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, it's not old news. Um, it's worse. OK, so yeah, you want to write some front-end stuff. You're starting from scratch. You're coming to school. Um, or you're a Ruby or a Java developer, and you're used to full stack um, setups. Generally now, you're going to have to learn a bunch of tools to get going. You're going to have to figure out what text editor you want. Um, and JavaScript tooling and kind of build paths are generally a bunch of little libraries and utilities that you've got to learn. And uh, they're changing all the time. And uh, it's a, a pretty rich landscape. The variety is huge. huge. So, uh, um, I kind of put together an example JavaScript setup. So you want to be effective in JavaScript. Um, you're either going to have to know what, about prototype inheritance, or you're going to have to get some kind of transpiler. So PureScript and TypeScript are amazing. Babel, CoffeeScript, uh, some other way of writing JavaScript. Uh, you're going to have to worry about modules, and require is kind of gone. And now Browserify, Webpack are the, the things. Gulp and Grunt, so you want to build and you want to run tasks. Um, and NPM, which is this amazing package manager out there. It's wonderful. Um, and as James pointed out in his talk, it's, it's a lot easier to publish to NPM, NPM than it is to other build uh, things. Uh, testing frameworks. And then you might actually want to use a, 
a, a framework. Like this is a, writing JavaScript and writing to the DOM is pretty low level. Uh, use something. You know, it's, uh, it's 2015 already, right? So pick one. Good luck. But okay, so there is a lot of into JavaScript, right? And whoever knows Scala doesn't want to learn any JavaScript. So the idea is that you have two sort of setup already. You are Scala experts, right? Is there is any who is not Scala expert here? Please. Okay, sure. Intermediate? Not yet. Well, know the syntax? Okay. Immutable? Whatever. Something, right? Better than JavaScript. Um, who is SBT expert here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so SBT expert is like this. It's not like this, it's like this. Okay? It's ever, forever. But whatever. At least you're familiar with SBT, right? You're maybe even more familiar with SBT than all this LP, um, Grant and Gulp and NPM and what's not. So two-third is under your belt. Okay, this is kind of our stab at mapping which two-thirds. Um, if you've suffered through SBT and you've bled with it, you have a Stockholm Syndrome association with it, um, it'll cover a lot of what you need. Um, so between SBT Web, the actual ScalaJS plugin and web jars, uh, Maven, instead of, uh, you're covered. So the last two things you've got to worry about is uh, our framework and some testing. Uh, so actually it's the end of our talk. Okay, whatever is a joke. Okay, so what is the final third of your setup? Um, this is the list, but we are not going to fish only, only with the list. We are going to show you actually step by step what should be done. And for the half of the people who know what ScalaJS is, it might be boring or it might be not. We'll see, right? So ScalaJS DOM and Scala tags, it will take care of your HTML and your attributes within HTML. We will talk about it. Scala X will make you reactive. We will see what it is. ScalaJS React, it means don't reinvent the wheel. We will talk about it. AutoWire, UPickle. If I'll start explaining with this slide, I'm not going to uh, surprise you with the next slide. So please uh, let me move. Okay, so um, the second part of the talk, and we have another two to go. We are going to talk about convincing your manager, right? Now, I rarely manage convince someone else when I don't know about the subject enough details. I don't know how about you, but I like to learn it first. And we would like to um, get you through some learning curve first, and it's gonna be totally boring. The demo is like this, right? Here. Yeah. It's yet another to-do component, but this one, if you understand how this one works, then you will be entitled to see Dave's amazing demo. So please stay tuned. Okay, so we have to-dos here, we have here input, we type something, and it goes. Now, if it's a suggestion, oh, there is a autocomplete. Well, almost autocomplete, but at least it shows. And it might be even that it shows from the server, and it highlights, right, and it's pretty reactive. Well, it's runs on localhost, but whatever. Okay, so here is the idea, okay? I'm going to explain what, what's needed to create this boring little demo, but have everything in place that you need in Scala.js in the next 10 minutes. Let's do this. We are going to talk about anatomy of typical Scala.js app. I don't think that there is typical Scala.js app because there is exactly two app and a half out there, but there is anatomy, we are going to talk about it. Um, within this repo, everything is minimal, which means if there are steps and you take out some line of the code, it stops working. Why it's important? Because it's very hard to go through tons of code and try to learn what the technology is. So the minimal is good in this sense. That, that's why the demo is so boring. The client assets in this particular demo are going to be independent from the server, which means you can run it from the file column slash slash no server, whatever, the client side still working, and we are going to talk about proposed architecture. Proposed by who? By us, okay? So, we are going to have eight steps, okay? The first step, make sure you share. So I guess your parents talked to you when you were younger, and now this is your um, opportunity to make it the right way, not the wrong way. The wrong way is to take JavaScript and to make it a backend. The right way is to take Scala and make it a frontend. And here is the idea, okay? You take this code 
from our slide, copied over to your SBT, to, the, to your build.sbt, import SBT plugin, and you have cross project when you have your really, really shared code. Okay, it's, it's totally real, like you can share, like it's the same, like it compiles in the same place. That's it, yeah, it's amazing, I don't know, okay. Manipulate this HTML DOM, yeah? Manipulation is bad. Only this particular time is good. So instead of going to your HTML file, you're going to call API, okay? And you're going to use your first facade. What is facade? It's when you do some, something specific and it's actually something else. So the idea is that you write Scala, right? But it, actually, it's JavaScript, but you don't care. You write Scala, okay? And you have two options. The first one is to call API, and another one to insert string. Oh, it's so type safe, right? No, it's not, I know. We will get to it. But the idea is that instead of writing JavaScript, you're writing Scala, okay? Let's continue. You've got dependencies, okay? In our real world, no one is writing without dependencies anymore. SBT it, okay? Just take it and just call web jars. Who does know what web jars are? Okay, for the sake of these five people, one sentence. Web jars is you're taking your JavaScript dependencies, wrap up by jar, upload it somewhere, and then call your SBT to take it, download it, and take JavaScript dependencies out of your jar and just use it in your HTML file, okay? And the idea is that you're not uploading, you're only downloading, because web jars already have everything that you need. It has Bootstrap, it has jQuery, what's not? There is a lot. Safe HTML education. So as part of our learning curve, we are going to talk about Scala tags, okay? We said that we have two options to manipulate our DOM. The first is to call API, the second, insert HTML fra fra fragments as strings. But it's not particularly type safe. So we are going to have divs, which are type safe. We are going to have paragraphs, p, which are type safe. We are going to have classes and attributes of, of HTML. They are totally type safe. There is no way of making an error, okay? That's it. Now, there is Scala CSS, and it's out of scope. But the idea is, whatever you have as a string, call MD8, you can type save it as well. It's out, it's, out, it's out of scope of this talk just because we opinionated about it and we think that designers, that CSS designers, they won't go and learn Scala just because we want them to be type safe. And usually the CSS comes from them and not from us. It's from us, just go Google Scala CSS and start using it. Don't reinvent the wheel. So when you write JavaScript, you, I hope for you, okay? I hope for you that you don't use your JavaScript directly, at least jQuery, right? Maybe Angular, maybe React. Backbone, you're, okay, outdated, but whatever. <laughs> Idea is that in this case, you can pick up one of the libraries. You remember what facade is? Facade is when you write Scala, and someone else is actually translating it to JavaScript, right? So there are facades for jQuery. You're writing Scala and you're getting jQuery on the other end. You write Angular, almost type safety. And you're getting the, your um, JavaScript on the other end. React, who knows what Ionic is? Okay, who knows what Electron is? Nice, so Ionic is the way to take your Angular application and make it mobile. You don't do a thing, you just compile. Electron is the same just for desktop. Just imagine you write Scala and you get your desktop application. You write Scala and you get your mobile application. I think it's just amazing, but whatever. The idea is that the code that is there, it's a React component. We picked up React as our framework of choice, as our facade of choice, for this demo and for Dave's demo that you're gonna see um, in eight slides. Three slides, actually. Okay, keep your data in sync. Like it's, uh, 
It goes without saying that we need to keep our data in sync, right? But it, we don't want to manage it by ourselves. So we are using Scalar X. How are we using it? So if everyone participated in GLSP talk, actually I could go to the next slide, but I don't know if everyone did, so I'm gonna explain it quickly. So here is the idea. You remember my little demo, and we had this input. As I enter the input, something changes beneath because I get my suggestions. It's because I have Rx variables. And the idea is I have an Rx observer, and suggestion component says register Rx component as I got as part of constructor. And when it changes, please call my refresh, my refresh suggestions. I'll be waiting. To do component, what it does, it actually on change, right? It's React component, it reacts to every change. So on change, everything that should be done, it's actually to update the current text. That's it. Everything else is being done automatically. And you can have multiple Rx variables. Just think about it. Treat your Ajax calls with some safety. This slide is kind of optional because you could call your Ajax without type safety, but then like the whole talk is kind of optional. So we follow the path of type safety. We actually, what we can do is call auto wire. And auto wire means that we have this shared code that we talked on the first slide, put your API there. Make it only in one place. And then the, make the client code look like it's a server code. Who can imagine that the last line on this slide is actually client side code? It does look so, eh? Call statically typed API. Implement callback that will be called when your future completes. And don't forget to use Rx to automatically update your client state. On the server side, you just call auto wire server dot route. And the idea is that actually the request, the auto wire request is totally independent from how you handled your HTTP. Maybe it was ACA HTTP, maybe it was Scalatra, maybe I don't know what it was. But the idea is if you know how segments look like and how params look like and they look in the specific way because of the API is shared, it's taken care of you. Like it's, you don't have even to think about it. You can call it through Postman. It's a little bit tricky, you don't have to. But you can, just to make sure that it works. And that's it. Those lines of code will take care of, you don't know. It's like RPC, okay? Who knows who, who doesn't know what RPC is? Yeah, you probably feel ashamed about it. So, everyone knows. Okay, the last slide. So now you want to release your client to the wild, right? How do I say it? How do I pronounce it? <laughs> okay, maybe you'll do it. I did it. Oh, you did it, sorry. I was preoccupied. So you have two options, right? You either host your assets on the server, and then you actually package it with the server. If your assets come from somewhere else, no problem, package it in some different way. It's totally flexible, right? It's a matter of how you copy it from one place to another place. Do it with this BT task, okay? Don't do it with the Sage. That's the idea. Um, and by the way, just as clarification note, we've said that we are going to use uh, uh, SBT Web. SBT Web is a very powerful plugin, and it can take, of, take, can take care of two things. First, it can take care of dependencies, and second, there is a lot of Plugins, it's a framework for plugins that you can uglify, minify, what's not. You don't have to. Because Scala.js itself, minifying and uglifying. If you have your own CSS and you'd like to compress it, maybe you'll use it. It depends. If you have CSS not in line, not in the code, not through Scala CSS. Okay, so. Hopefully now you have your setup. You've gone through all this. You've gone to Katrin's uh, GitHub and uh, you've gone through these steps. It doesn't take that long. Probably it'll take as long as it took to listen to this presentation. Um, so now you got to show your prospect that this works. Um, and there's some tips on doing that. You could uh, find an internal project. Um, Julie had a great example of that. Um, uh, you got to find something people care about. So it can't be a, another to-do or, you know, 
uh, an autocomplete suggestion. Um, you got to find something people are going to use in your company. And uh, maybe, like, get fancy, like, uh, maybe something that's more than just forms and um, validation. Um, so use D3 or some other charting, chart.js or something. And uh, it's crucial that uh, you own all the problems associated with your little project. So you don't want to do something and go halfway and then they're stuck with, well, what if and why doesn't this work? Uh, you've got to have all the answers, you. So um, good luck. Um, you got to you got to be able to back up your claims. Um, it's not that hard. I think everything we presented today will allow you to back up any claim um, somebody might throw at you. Um, yeah. Okay. So here's our tips. Uh, managers like dashboards, consoles. So dashboard everything. Write a console. Find some part of your company that needs some uh, uh, interactive uh, awareness. Use WebSockets because they're super sexy, and make sure your server pushes because that's amazing, right? When you didn't do anything and something pops up. That's, uh, I'm sold. And always use a dark background. Seriously, um, you don't want them to look like another bootstrap, uh, you know, just starting up. And think uh, Cassandra Ops Center. Wow, that's amazing. It's serious stuff, right? Um, we saw a presentation today of uh, um, data centers and battery uh, cluster, and it had an amazing console, and it was super dark. So, in fact, our whole talk could be summed up with use a dark background. Okay, so uh, we were thinking, uh, what, could we, what could we demo that uh, had some kind of value that uh, our client could use, we could use, and doesn't exist already? And um, so we work with ACA Cluster a lot, and ACA Clusters present opportunities because, um, you know, quite often with ACA Cluster, you're opening about 20 SSH shells, and you don't really know what's going on. Um, you bring up uh, these nodes, they join the cluster, and uh, you know, you've written test cases and hopefully written some distributed VM tests, but um, it'd be nice to see what's going on. It's specifically, uh, what are all the actors in my cluster? Um, have they joined the cluster? Are they reachable? Are they gossiping? And uh, what boxes are they on? Because you can put some actors in the same box or not. So uh, I thought, hey, it's, it, you know, we might have been inspired a little by, by Conductor's um, GUI, but it's not really the same thing. It's very ACA specific. So um, before I go on, okay, so yes. yeah. Um, basically what we did is we wrote a backend that subscribes to a cluster you tell it to subscribe to. So it's gonna get all the cluster events. Um, we're gonna push these to, to the UI with uh, ACA Streams WebSockets. And that's like a, you know, 20 lines of code, very easy. Um, we're going to have a RPC with AutoWire, and RPC is amazing. I, it's so wonderful not have to um, worry about uh, JSON. Um, we're using MicroPickle, as uh, Katrin alluded to, and there, there's some interesting things about MicroPickle and uh, sealed traits, but uh, they're well documented. Once you got over that, it was fine. Um, so yeah, I'm just calling a, a method from my client to my server, like do something. Here's some parameters. and. Um, so we picked uh, ScaleJS React. Uh, did it, everybody knows what React is, right? Yeah, OK. Uh, in a sentence or less, <laughs> um, a React component uh, takes some input, it can keep some state, and it renders some bit of your DOM. And that's about it. You nest these things. And uh, uh, the React magic is, uh, you know, it creates a virtual DOM. It compares tree differences and finds uh, the most efficient way to actually do the changes in the DOM itself so you don't have to. Um, uh, there's some debate about whether it's, whether it's really more performing than Angular or not, whatever. It's easier to understand for me and uh, it's very fast to get going. And there's this amazing GitHub out there by David Barry called ScaleJS React. I think there's three ScaleJS React stories out there. This one is the one we picked and it's, it's beautiful. Um, he has lenses and some ScaleZ in there. Um, but you don't have to use them. But you could. Um, you, you could, but you yeah. don't have to. And uh, so when we're using um, Rx for our data binding, exactly like Julie demonstrated. Um, yeah, it's easy, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I want to acknowledge uh, both David Barry and uh, Howie Lee, and especially Otto Kranz, because uh, he's, uh, like Julie also mentioned, he has a, a um, ScalaJS single page application tutorial. Just think Google ScalaJS Spa tutorial. Um, and it's a Git, GitHub book. It's very well laid out. Um, I think he's recently converted it from Spray to Play. 
but uh, that's okay. You'll still, it's still very usable, and um, uh, it's how we started. And we were going like in 20 minutes. You know, we were up and running with this with this GitHub. So uh, uh, we owe everything to uh, these three guys. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do some real highlights uh, with a facade here. Um, so I'm using a D3. Uh, D3, like Julie said, does some crazy math, and um, it also has like jQuery, like selector API for, for you to display your stuff, and um, you know behaviors and events. I just wanted the math. I wanted to be able to lay out an echo cluster so nothing touched. Um, I didn't even want the really freaky bouncy stuff. I just wanted to lay it out. Um, so uh, I I found a D3 uh, on GitHub. There's like three of them. Um, facade. And this is what it looks like. And I, this is all the stuff I'm using in my whole application. Um, and so you, it's just an interface into a Scala.js library. And uh, that's it. And this is how I actually use it from my Scala. Um, this is an example of a Scala.js React component. And so D3, when it displays its force directed graph, um, has a whole way of doing it. And um, I wanted to be able to interact with my uh, nodes in my graph in a special way. I wanted to uh, listen for events and, you know, change colors and move them around and stuff. So I didn't want to use D3's API, so I wanted to use React. So I was able to actually combine D3 and React quite successfully, and uh, I just Googled D3 and React, and there's 20 guys out there who've got 20 different ways of doing it. And I picked one, and uh, it worked amazingly. Um, so I'm just writing SVG with Scala tags, and uh, I'm drawing some links, I'm drawing some nodes, and each of these things are little React components, and it works. Um, so, the, the most important thing is that now you get to get back to arguing about the important things, like readability. So, uh, the top line is how we calculate all the uh, indexes for links in a strongly connected graph, and the bottom line is how somebody code reviewing would probably ask you to write it. It's but uh, this is Scala. Sorry? Yeah. Well, even a Scala. Yeah, no, there's people that don't like the top way at all. But if you're back to arguing about flat map versus four, that's great. You're back to where you want to be, right? You're not to worry about. Yeah, instead of undefined, you just. Yeah. Like, yeah you're this not... one wins. No, that one wins. Yeah. Why do I have to put some? I know yeah. that it exists, but it's not monad, so I can't use four. Yeah. Right? There you go. Okay, so I'll show it to you, and I think we're coming sure. up in time. Can you hold my mic? Mm -hmm. It's not this one, don't worry. Okay, so there's my uh, cluster, I'll, I'll refresh it, and I'm just painting these things uh, in different ways. Um, D3 uh, will run a tick, and it'll recalculate distances, and I, I've set it up so I can force that, and I can just keep clicking it, until it gets to be perfectly symmetrical. Um, that's not the demo, it just, that's an aside. Uh, so let's, uh, this is my ACA cluster. Um, huh, like, all, I got all these ACA nodes, I wanna know what depends on what. In ACA cluster you have roles, and uh, one way of um, doing service discovery and uh, dependencies uh, is with roles. So I could say, uh, for instance, uh, this bar worker depends on bar security, right? So I could add a role. And so this is a all scale JS React right now. So I'm doing traditional form stuff. And so I say bar worker, de bar worker depends on Baz security. I'm gonna call this Baz, and it's a distributed router dependency. So I'm gonna add this, and uh, ooh, look at that. So I can actually see um, my dependency in my cluster. And uh, this little thing up here is my backend writing Unicode Creole font in SVG. I never thought I'd do that. I, I normally worry about backend code, and here I'm doing this, and uh, that's pretty amazing. Um, and uh, I can see here that uh, all the different uh, pieces of hardware where my cluster's running, and you can see the force directed graph running. Um, when I actually let go of my uh, mouse, um, I'm not calling a Scala.js React refresh. Um, I was able to, uh, Scala.js React has a lot of lifecycle life functions, and like should update, will update, will mount, unmount. 
And I was able to successfully hook into those because of this amazing Scala.js React uh, API I'm using. Um, case kill on. one of the nodes, kill them. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna kill one of the nodes because that's a fun yeah. part of the demo. Yeah, bear with me. By the way, how many of you uh, have ever worked with Zaka or with Zaka clustering? Oh, we're in a good company. Who hasn't yet? Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to discover a cluster. Don't diverge from what we said. Okay, so here's another cluster that is actually up, and I'm gonna bring one of the nodes down in this cluster. I'll kill a couple. There is anyone who worked with Conductor R? No, that's good. We don't have to have a disclaimer that it's not Conductor R, and that we're not competing. That's good. Ooh, they're unreachable. So this is a WebSocket. Um, what manager wouldn't like to know that? And uh, in ACA cluster, if something's unreachable for a certain amount of time, it eventually becomes removed. And yeah, that's where you clap. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a toy right now, but uh, this is uh, something that we did, and we're not front end experts. Um, not at all. Not at all, so uh, if we could do it, you guys could do it. And if we could convince our managers to use this stuff, so could you. So is a roping up note. Um, I think we found, I can say I found, but I think we found two main issues when working with Scala.js. It's the first, it's a little bit overwhelming at first. There are a little bit too many parts. Um, but it's fine if like you're going to our first repo and take a look at the tags so you can follow through. Um, and the second one is actually, it's uh, still rough at the edges, right? So please don't ask about tests, please don't, please. Please don't ruin my experience talking first time at the conference, okay? Um, but it's really good, it's really good. I think whoever, some of us who failed their startups because they couldn't figure out how to do front end, is their chance to succeed. You know who you are, right? Say two. We are done. I'm sorry? Okay, so sorry, so question was, you still need a designer to create a great, de a great design, right? Uh, yes, indeed, but the idea is that usually um, when you're trying to create your own startup and um, before you hire the designer, you're going to do it by yourself and then it's gonna fail, right? Because you can't figure out quietly what's going on with this JavaScript, you just go over the step, right? You're going directly to your success with your nice Scala.js design, maybe not the best, but nice enough to get enough money for the designer. That's how we see it, right? Julie, that's how we see it. Ah, she left, okay. So here is the thing, I've never seen company, and as far as I understand, there is no company the designer would like to touch HTML. If they do, they automatically become, instead of web designer, web developer, and we would like to convert them to Scala.js. If they do do only CSS, then we, uh, we understand why Scala CSS might not fit, because Scala CSS is you're taking CSS and writing it in Scala. And it might not fit. That's why it's out of scope, because our opinion is that it should be better tools of managing CSS outside of Scala, but still have type safe. Have, have type safety, yeah. So there is, there is a gap.
Um, we are from uh, Bold Radius. Bold Radius is a consultant's company. We do official courses for TypeSafe. Please send them over. We will yeah. take care of them for a decent amount of money. My managers are going to love it. It was recorded, right? Okay, good. Now, uh, uh, seriously speaking, um, it's hard to imagine JavaScript developer who is going to, 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 to learn Scala because JavaScript developers t tend not to think that type safety is good or not to think about type safety at all, which I, I believe it's a bad thing, right? We are in Scala conference. I'm not going to talk more about it. So they need to be educated first and uh, get on board in terms of type safety go is good. Once they understand that, they will uh, run into you, right? So it's a matter of educating them. It's a human thing, right? What can you do about it? I hope I addressed your question. Okay, so there's a, a something called a Workbench by Guess Who, Howie Lee, um, and uh, so it's not as sexy as some of the other ones where you know you think about changing a file and it refreshes the browser. Um, you actually have to refresh the browser, but it, it listens to file changes. And uh, between that and source maps and inspecting um, in your browser, you, like stepping through your code, you're covered. So I don't mind alt tabbing and refreshing. Thank you very much.